Now, I showed you how you can copy an entire folder. However, if you go into the comma key, go to tool, and another tool with multiple objects is this Julie Z tool. Let's go ahead and load that up. So you're gonna see in here we have a bathing suit, a body, and hair. So if I want, if I have the hair selected, I can go back to the file I was working with here, and I can say append, and then I can just select the hair. And if I, because I appended, it's gonna to go to the very bottom, and now if I go into solo mode, you're gonna see the hair is in my scene file. However, if I go out of solo, you're gonna see these were two very different scales. The hair is way up here, and then my entire body is way down here. And in fact, while I was working on this character, if I go down here to like vest and hit F, you're gonna see if I make my brush size really big at a, to a thousand, uh, it's pretty big and I can go through here and I can move stuff around no problem. However, if I hit F now to frame all my subtools and I alt tap the hair, you're gonna see the hair is so big and so far away from my other character here that if I make my draw size up to a thousand, it's actually really small. Now you can go in here and you can go to your preferences. Let's go ahead and just dock this over here to the left. So preferences, draw. You can crank up your max brush size and that'll allow you to go from 1000 to 5000 and that might help a little bit. Uh, you can also, if we turn this back down to 1000, you can change your dynamic brush scale. So you can go through here and you can set this to like 5 and now your draw size will go from 1 to 1000 and you're able to cap out at this size. And of course, if you keep cranking this up, you'll be able to get bigger and bigger just as a multiplier. However, ideally, what ZBrush likes is when you have an object, if we go down here to geometry, size, you're gonna see this XYZ size is at 38. Um, ideally, ZBrush likes this XYZ size to be about two. And in fact, if you want this to behave normally, if I put this dynamic brush scale down to one, and we have our hair selected, and we go down here to deformation unify, you're gonna see my XYZ size is now two, and if I hit F to frame, now my hair is down here, it fits this character a little bit better, and you're gonna see my brush size works fine, and it's more compatible with the way ZBrush likes to work. So that's part of the problem, or one of the issues you may arrive at if you have two different tools that you import at different scales. So let's talk a little bit about that. As a quick example, I'm gonna go into Marvelous Designer. I'm gonna choose an avatar in here. I'm gonna go here to File, Export OBJ. To my desktop, I'll say Avatar. Go ahead and hit OK. And if I go back into ZBrush here, I'm gonna go out of edit mode, say always switch, hit Control N to clear my canvas, select Poly Mesh 3D, I'm gonna go in here to import, and ZBrush can import a lot of different objects. You see if you click this down arrow, there's a lot of import options available to you. I'm gonna choose this avatar, just double click it. And if I drag this out in my scene, I go into edit mode, and I go down here to geometry, XYZ size, you're gonna see it imported and it went ahead and set this size to two. So if I go through here now and I say append a cube, it's gonna fit perfectly within a ZBrush primitive. This is the scale that ZBrush likes to work at. So when you bring in an object, regardless of the unit scale it's at, it'll go ahead and import it at the correct size here. So if I go through here and I make my brush size a thousand, you see I got plenty of space here. Um, everything in ZBrush is gonna work as expected. Now when it goes to export, because my geometry set the XYZ size of two, if I go down here to my export options, it's gonna multiply this value by this scale, which is 966. That's gonna ensure that as you're working in ZBrush, the tools will behave as expected. And if I go down here, it'll export back out to match the original export scale. Now, where problems can happen is if I go back to this working file here, these objects are at two very different export scales. So if I go through here and say append my avatar, and we hit F to frame, and that's gonna frame our subtool first, and I'll hit F again, that's gonna frame everything. I turn off transparency. You're gonna see this is my avatar OBJ, 
And if I hit S and go to draw size and I go to a thousand, you're going to see my draw size is tiny. And again, I have to go in here and like crank up my max brush size. So here it is at 5,000. Again, still super small. And in fact, this little dot way down here, if I zoom in, this is the rest of my character. So you're going to see these are two very different scales here. So let's go ahead and close all these out. Let's take our Z plugin. We're going to go over here and we're going to say Scale Master. If you click this very top button right here, you're going to see a bunch of instructions in here. And in fact, if you click this one right here, it's going to take you to a YouTube video where Joseph Dress will tell you all about Scale Master and how it works. But what I'm going to do to make this compatible with our other scene file, I'm going to take this avatar, go down here to Deformation, Unify, and I'm going to hit F to frame. And now you're going to see he's going to be at a primitive scale and he's going to be moved right to the middle of the world axis. So if I go in here and say append a cube and go into transparency mode, again he fits perfectly within this one unit or in this case two unit primitive scale. And if I take this and say delete and I have him selected and I just scale him up to kind of fit my scene, now he's more compatible with this original scene file. So now I can go back into my preferences, max brush size, change that back down to a thousand. And if I want to work on him, I can just make my draw size whatever. So that's one way to make things compatible between two different scenes is just to go ahead and scale it down. Of course, you don't have to hit unify. Uh, you can go through here and you can scale this manually up or down. You can go in here to deformation size and scale this up or down. And you can also go in here to XYZ size and type in or use the slider to make it whatever size that you'd like. But just remember this size is always going to get multiplied by your export size here, which in this case is just one. But the biggest takeaway is whenever you import anything into ZBrush, regardless of scale, ZBrush will ensure that it sets its XYZ size to two and then it'll multiply it by whatever export value it needs to just to maintain compatibility with the ZBrush interface. However, if you start mixing and matching two different objects with two different scales, just be aware you may have to scale one down or scale one up in order to maximize compatibility.